Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today we are going to be doing part one of our ping pong ball puppet workshops. Sorry, it's kind of a tongue twister, so I have to say it slowly. Um, I'm going to show you kind of what we're doing today. We're going to make little guys like these. And I think these puppets are super effective because they are so simple. All you have to do is make the head and pop it on your finger and then you instantly have a character. Um, I think it's also great for all ages. Um, I'll show you kind of what this workshop was inspired by. I made this puppet head for one of my finals and that's all it was. Um, and it was filmed at home and everything because of the pandemic. Um, but I really love this puppet because she's so expressive and I really, I kind of wanted you guys to have that experience too. So um, I made this out of Warbla, which is like a thermoplastic. We're not doing that today. That's kind of, um, first of all, Warbla is expensive, but also it's, um, it's hard to work with. So we're just not going to do that today. Um, I came up with ping pong balls instead. So yeah, um, the main thing I want to stress about ping pong ball puppets is I want you guys to just have fun with it. Um, also, I know that ping pong balls aren't like, you know, a super common thing to have just sitting around in your house, which is totally fine um, because we, I didn't make one yet, but I will make one with you. Um, we can also use newspaper and masking tape. Here. Oh my gosh, my ping pong balls are gonna roll everywhere. Um, just some masking tape. So yeah, let's get started with the ping pong ball first. Um, I might make a few with you guys today. I don't really know how long this is going to take. Um, it's kind of up to you to decide how much effort and like, you know, time you want to put on, um, your puppet that you're making. I also think ping pong ball puppets are cool because you can make them so fast. Um, and you can like, you know, just have like a whole collection ready. So if you were going to do a show that had, you know, like a large cast of characters, um, these would be an effective choice just because you can pop them on your finger. Um, on and off so easily. So yeah, we're just gonna get started. Um, I have an X-Acto blade here. If you are a young one watching, I would really recommend um, a parent using this. It's kind of dangerous if um, you don't know what you're doing. So my ping pong ball kind of has this like ugly little logo on it. That's totally fine. This is gonna be the bottom of it um, and we won't ever have to see that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut a hole in it to fit our finger. So um, what I'm gonna do is cut a little X on this. Um, the X is gonna be smaller than like what the diameter of my finger would be because we can always, um, you know, like trim it and keep trimming it until your finger fits. You don't wanna make it too big because then your finger, it'll like, your ping pong ball puppet will slide all the way um, until like top of your finger hits the top of the ping pong ball. And then like, it'll just kind of look weird. So you want your finger to fit really snugly inside. Um, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna make a little X. And again, please be careful. Um, I'm trying not to, that would be really bad if I caught myself on live camera. It'd be kind of really embarrassing actually. And painful. All right, so I don't know if you can see, probably not yet. Um, I made a little X and Honestly, it's probably only like half an inch each way, um, maybe even a little bit smaller than that. Um, so now that you've made your little X, I want you to kind of just like trim off those little um, tabs that you've created to make a hole. It'll make kind of like a squarish shape, that's fine. Um, that actually might fit your fingers even a little bit better, like make it a little bit more snug just because a square shape isn't obviously your natural finger shape. So it'll have more to catch on if that makes sense. All right. See my holes kind of getting there. You can see that. A cool little tip with the exacto knife is you always want to cut away from yourself so you don't like you know end up accidentally stabbing your eye out that would not be cool all right i'm gonna shake out little pieces um and now i made a little hole so yeah um i'm gonna try to put my finger in it and as you can see it's kind of too small if you want your your ping pong ball puppet to kind of like sit on top of your finger like that that's fine but the only thing is that it might end up falling off because um, it's just not on super securely. Um, actually, that's not looking too bad, but I still want it down a little bit lower. Um, so I can see it already like almost fits, but I'm just gonna trim it just a little bit. And I just, I don't want 
don't want it to fall off my finger. So the tricky thing is if you make this too big for your finger um, and it'll like, you know, it'll go flying and everything, you do have to restart. So just kind of go slowly um, and just like keep testing it out. It's okay to have to cut like a billion times to get the right fit. All right, shake out that. All right, I think I like that. That fits nicely. Do you agree? Oh, see, he nodded his head, yeah. Um, all right, so already you can kind of see how um, there's like a character going on here. Um, actually in our hand puppetry class here at UConn, that was a class I just took um, this the past semester. We did ball-headed puppets. This is what you would call it actually, um, which is, it's basically just a blank ball sitting on top of your bare hand. And um, they actually get really expressive and they are super cool. But just because I like personalizing puppets and everything, um, we're gonna take this a little bit further today. So we have this, um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a newspaper puppet, newspaper and masking tape head. I don't have any newspaper because everything is digital now. So I'm gonna be using a Yukon magazine. Sorry, Yukon. I'm just gonna rip out a page. Um, I probably would recommend using um, the ping pong ball if you have it, just because it's gonna make it a little bit cleaner. But um, this still works. You can still get totally creative with this. Um, so just honestly crumple it up into a ball. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any questions or anything, um, please feel free to like pop them into the comments. Um, Judith, Judith Vickers said, I can't make a hole in my tennis ball. Ooh, that's a big puppet. And that also might be a little bit heavy. Um, I would suggest doing what I'm doing right now then, um, just kind of making a makeshift puppet out of the, the newspaper. Um, so I'm gonna crumple it up and I'm gonna get it really tight because this is so small. And this might actually be kind of cool because um, it's gonna like be kind of like an organic shape and everything. It's not gonna be as clean as the ping pong ball. Um, so maybe like you're making some kind of like monster puppet or I don't know, it's, it's up to you. Um, all right, so now I've kind of got my little ball, right? Um, we're gonna add in like the little um, hole in it later. What you can do now is though, if you just like kind of look at it and there probably is a natural place that your finger wants to go in it. So um, if you kind of want to like figure that out now, you can do that. See, so it kind of like sticks on top. It's not too um, tight yet though, but we will fix that. So now, oh no, my masking tape has a green mark on it. Let me cut that off, or rip it off. All right, so we've done that. My masking tape is a little bit thick. Um, I couldn't find my my like one inch one, like the little one. Um, I would probably use the the thinner one just because um, this is so small. But it's up to you. So now you're just gonna cover it. And it's okay, this is like a rough puppet. So it's okay if it's not looking like it's absolute best, it's not super clean. We are gonna fix that when we decorate it. Um, it's gonna look really cool. All right. Um, just a little tip, if you kind of like have an idea of where you want the, like the face to go, um, you might try putting you know, like making sure the seams of this tape don't cover that area. Or maybe you want that, maybe that's your design. I don't know, it's up to you. Um, let me just get the back here. Just a little bit. This tape is so thick. All right. I have done it. Um, I made a little ball. And now, so I did kind of create like a loose insertion point, um, but it, I'm kind of worried, well, it's not falling off. That's kind of surprising. Um, what I would do is I would go back in, um, you can use scissors for this too. I know that an X-Acto knife is kind of like an artist's tool. I know not everyone has that. 
Um, but I would go in and just kind of like honestly gouge out a little um, hole for my finger. And I would make it again smaller than my finger. Newspaper is cool because it's flexible, so it'll kind of like, um, you know, like conform to the shape of your finger. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just doing that by sticking it in and twisting it. Um, careful not to poke through and hurt yourself. Please do not hurt yourself. Exacto knives scare me. They're so useful, but they can be tricky. All right. And again, if you don't have an exacto knife, you can like just take a pair of scissors and like kind of kind of stab it in there until it's ready. Um, all right. I like that. Um, all right. We've done that. It is time for the fun part, decorating. Um, also, one more thing with the newspaper ball puppets, um, these will wear down over time. Again, this is kind of like a makeshift puppet. Um, so don't like expect it to um, like hold up for a really long time. Um, but it will work for today and for our part two on Friday. Um, during then, during that workshop, we will be kind of like exploring how to perform. Um, and I'm actually kind of using techniques that were taught in the hand puppetry class here at UConn. Um, so it'll kind of be like, you know, an inside look on what that class looks like. Um, it was super fun during those classes. Everyone was smiling. Um, but yeah, so anyways, let's get started. I want to stress here, and I said this in the beginning, but I'm going to say it again. I want you guys to have fun with creating these. Literally anything you can find around the house that kind of like strikes your fancy, um, you can use to create these and kind of like add on. Um, I'm going to show you what I did with her. So I just found some yarn that I liked um, and cut up little strips and then like glued it on top. Um, I also just used paint. Um, oh, I finally bought markers. So you can use markers to color on these, although I'm not sure how long it takes um, for it to dry. So I used paint when I was doing um, these little guys. Um, something I've seen, if you like hair um, on puppets, I know I love like, you know, a nice puppet that has long flowing locks. Um, I've seen people use plastic bags on hair as, as hair before for puppets. Um, it usually creates like surprisingly a really beautiful effect because it's so lightweight and it's just like flowy. Um, I think that's really nice. So if you have a plastic bag and you want to add that as hair, please do that. That would be really cool. Um, but I'm probably going to be using yarn today and I'll show you how to do that. Um, if you don't want your puppet to have hair, that's okay too. Um, we can just kind of like decorate the basic um, ball right here. So yeah, um, I also have googly eyes and you can use googly eyes if you want to put on the eyes, art to use as the eyes, but um, I don't know if I'd really recommend it just because you know how like the eyes always kind of like sink to the bottom. Um, a really important thing with hand puppets is the focus. Um, and if the eyes are kind of like doing something wonky, I don't think that'll work super well. But again, it's your puppet. Maybe you can cover the entire thing with googly eyes and then it's like some creepy monster. That would be really cool. Um, so anyways, let's just get started. Um, I'm going to decorate my little ping pong ball guy that I did first. Um, I think because these two, I already made these two, I want to kind of add on like another character to that um, that would like fit in that world. So I, I used orange and um, green. So now I'm going to make a purple character just because that's like, it's also a secondary color. They look, they look well together or they mix well together. So I'm going to use paint because I love my paint. And I'm going to squirt a little bit on. And you can be decorating your newspaper puppet too um, with this same method. There we go. Now I'm gonna, sorry you guys can't really see this. I'm just gonna mix up the colors. There you go, you can see it now. I would also always recommend like something to paint on top of so you don't get it on your, you know, I'm using like my nice desk right now. Um, so I'm gonna kind of use the, the magazine to help out. All right. Got like a deep plum here. I always use way too much paint whenever I'm doing things. Such a waste. I need to like remind myself every time. Maybe I'll write it on the actual paint bottles. All right. 
see I just used too much white. That's going to be more than enough. Yeah, I want like a nice light purple. There we go. All right. Um, and I'm just going to paint the base. Um, so yeah. If you want, um, if you're using like markers to, to color this in, um, I would recommend leaving like a space for the eyes and then going back in later and doing it. Um, you also don't have to have eyes. And that's something I want to um, stress because these puppets are really effective um, because the ball head kind of naturally gives like, when we look at it, we naturally kind of know where the eyes would fall. So um, even with like a bare ball, you can kind of like, you know, still have focus with it and everything. So maybe your, maybe your puppet doesn't even have to have eyes if you don't want it to. This color is pretty, it's like a lilac. All right, almost done. And yeah, my hands are gonna get a little bit messy here just because that's how we roll. All right. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about was, um, here, I'll let that dry just for like a little bit. Acrylic paint doesn't take long um, was, I wrote it in, like, the, on the Facebook event description, um, oops, for, no, stay, there we go, um, you can use air dry clay, um, to sculpt features, and I kind of wanted to, like, say that just because if you wanted something more along the lines of this, um, you, but, like, you know, without using expensive warbler, um, you can kind of use, like, air dry clay and sculpt onto this, onto the ping pong ball, um, so I started to play with one here. I just, I have this like weird terracotta um, air dry clay. I don't know why it's sitting around my house, but that's what I had. So you got to make do with what you have. Um, you can just kind of like sculpt features onto it. So I'm just going to show you what I did. Um, I just created, let's see, I'm bad at holding things up to the camera. Um, I just created like a little nose, as you can see right here. Um, and then I added some cute little cheeks because I wanted like, you know, a smiley look. Um, and then I tried to add like teeny tiny eyebrow dents, um, which I kind of would have like painted some highlights and shadows to really emphasize them. Um, I probably won't paint that today, um, but I did just want to kind of show you that I was experimenting with it and that is something you could definitely do too. Um, but yeah. The only thing is you want to make sure it doesn't get too heavy for your finger. Um, that's another thing with these. If you make a puppet that's too heavy, your finger's going to get really tired really fast, and then your hand's going to start shaking. Um, I know that when I was trying to perform the, the finger puppet for my final, um, I had accidentally drank an iced coffee that day, and iced coffee makes me very jittery. So my hands would not, sh would not stop trembling, um, and I had to end up delaying the filming of it just because of that. So yeah, um, I need you to dry. All right, I'm gonna like do this. Um, no, in the meantime, I'll decorate. I'll decorate the newspaper puppet head too. Um, for this, I think markers do work on masking tape. Um, it's kind of like a little bit dicey because I think it takes a little bit of time for it to dry, but you could definitely use markers. Um, in fact, I may do that. My cat just entered the room. You were wondering what that noise was. All right, so I'm going to get my Crayola markers. Fancy. All right, I'm getting some paint on it, but um, you have that. Let's just say, and which way did my finger fit on it? There we go. Um, oh, something you could have done too, I suppose, um, is you, pr you probably could have shaped the newspaper to have some features too. So similar to that um, air dry clay thing. So like, I'm kind of seeing like a little tiny nose in here right now. 
So if you are kind of seeing a, a shape in your newspaper, um, that might be something to explore. Yeah, I'm going to kind of form it so I see that nose a little more. Let's see. Also, the, the way the tape is like acting up here, it almost looks like a hairline or something. Um, so I think I kind of like that. I'm going to go with that. Let's pretend it has, has black hair. All right. Um, if you have permanent markers, that probably works better than just Crayola markers. Um, unfortunately, all of my permanent markers are at the Puppet Studio, which is closed because of the pandemic. So I don't have those. Very sad about it. All right. Let's see. All right. So my guy already, I just kind of gave it like a cropped black hairline so maybe um i don't know maybe it's a military guy because they have really short hair right um i don't know you kind of like start playing around start trying to figure out what um character you want it to be um i'm gonna make this into a little guy what color eyes he should have i want to do blue because i like blue Oh, somebody just said tinfoil would be um, another good option that would allow you to put more detail in. Um, Aaron Smith said that. I actually agree with that. That is something I probably could have explored. Um, so yeah, if you have not started this yet and you want to do that, um, I would definitely say you can try out tinfoil too. Um, tinfoil might make really cool, like, I don't know, hair, like features onto the puppet too. Um, so you can kind of do with that what you want. Um, Again, yesterday, somebody also said that paper mache would be cool. Um, if you know how to paper mache, I also recommend that. There's like, like a million different ways you can make this head that fits on your finger. Um, it's up to you to as to how you want to do it. Um, just because, I don't know, I'm not going to focus too much on this little guy. because they're a little bit harder to work on. Oh, I'm getting paint all over myself. I love that. Let's see. Sorry, I'm drawing on eyes right now. A general rule with puppet eyes is that you want them just like slightly above where the center line would be on the ball, because um, the center line is kind of like roughly where like the nose would kind of be perceived. So um, yeah. All right, so I made two little cute little eyes, if you can see that. Um, I'm not putting, again, too much effort into this, but you can decorate all you want. All right, this guy should be dry enough now, yeah. Um, so, I've done this. Um, a lot of times with these these ping pong ball puppets, um, your finger will kind of just like want to naturally fall into a certain like way with this. Um, so I wouldn't paint the face just anywhere. I would kind of put the the ping pong ball onto your finger and see like where it wants to go. Um, you kind of have to listen to what the puppet's telling you here. Um, and then you can kind of see where you want the face. So I'm seeing it, you know, here. Um, let's see, I wonder what color the eyes should be. I could just do them white. Let's see. Again, I probably used too much white paint, but that's okay. Yeah, it's dry now. All right, so you can take it off your finger once you figure out where you want the face to be, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hold it like that so I can see it. I'm just going to paint some cute little shapes. All right, one circle there. One 
here. All right, I've got my two little eyes here. Now I'm gonna let those dry just a little bit. Um, meanwhile, I'm gonna paint the mouth. Hmm. Let's do some some red lips. Add a little bit of red paint here. All right. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paint some lips. Probably gonna make them pretty small. That's my personal preference. I like it when the eyes look really big and like the, the mouth is tiny. Um, but you can do, you can mess around with your proportions, do whatever you want. All right, I painted some cute little lips. Maybe this is a cute little lady. Um, and oh, I'm going to paint the holes of the eyes now. I'm not going to paint a nose on my puppet just because, I don't know, that's my style. But um, if you want to, please feel free to. And with the eyes, um, you want to make sure that the, that like the, what do you call it, the pupil, um, make sure, like kind of works with the puppet. Um, sorry, my dogs are very loud. Um, so just kind of like start putting on, um, again, kind of like start small, then you can add a little bit more to it, just in case you make that mistake. Just use enough paint. But also, if you want your puppet to have kind of, um, like wonky focus, because that might be a character choice, you can definitely do that. All right, so I've painted one little eye. I'm leaving some like white space in it just so it looks like her eyes are sparkling. All right. I think those are fairly even. I'm going to paint some little lashes because now it's time to have fun with it. Um, you can add like whatever features you want. Like I think that this guy had eyebrows. Um, I think the other one had like makeup, um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do some cute little lashes. Hmm. Probably should have waited for the white paint to dry, but I only have so much time. <laughs> My dogs are so loud. I have chihuahuas, so if you've ever hung around chihuahuas, you know that they are big mouths. All right. I'm going to give her some like high arching eyebrows too. All right. So I've done that. She kind of looks like surprised all the time. Like that might be a character choice. Um, so, and again, we'll be going over um, kind of how to perform these on Friday. Um, and that's gonna be, it's it's gonna be like a series of exercises, movement exercises, just to kind of show you how much range these puppets can have. But we'll also do some work with um, how to develop character and just, I don't know, the way they walk or the way they, they react and breathe. Um, the last thing I wanna just say is, um, I was gonna use this yarn to add some hair to her. Um, I don't, have, I don't have time for that today. I don't want to make you guys watch me do that. But um, all I usually do is just cut out some little strips. Where's the end of it here? Um, depends how long you want your hair. Um, if I say I wanted like it a little bit longer, um, kind of for that like you know ambient movement, um, I'd cut it. I don't know, probably like there. It's up to you. You can figure it out. Um, and then I would cut a bunch of those and just add. It takes like the teensiest amount of hot glue to do it. Um, so yeah, all I would do is just put like little, 
little drops of hot glue everywhere and place that down, wait for it to dry, and do it again. Um, that's kind of how I got this going. And then the hair doesn't have to be perfect. You can always give it a haircut after. Um, but yeah, so we are out of time. But that's okay because that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you guys. Um, so yeah, um, oh, somebody said they use newspaper, black marker, and nail polish. See, that is a good example of being creative with what you have. Um, I would have never thought of nail polish in a million years. I, I love that. I applaud you. Um, but anyway, so that's it. Um, I really hope you join me again on Friday if you did happen to make a puppet with me today. Um, if you do want to do Friday and you didn't make a puppet, you still have time. So um, I would highly recommend that. But I hope to see you guys then. And thank you so much for joining me today. Bye, everyone.